Can you guess where these people are from? Europe, maybe North America? What if I told you these people are totally native to Africa? These are the Amazigh. The Amazigh are the indigenous inhabitants of North Africa. They number approximately 30 million and are distributed across several areas of North Africa, that is Morocco, Algeria, Tunisia, and Libya, as well as some Saharan regions in Mauritania, Niger, Chad, Mali, and Senegal. Phenotype. Let's talk about their features. While there is no singular Berber look, we can find certain features like light skin, blue or green eyes, and straight hair among them, especially in the Rif and Kabylie regions. Some other Berber groups of northern Mali, Niger and Mauritania, such as the Tuareg, have bigger fractions of sub-Saharan genetic makeup and hence can look black or mixed. This diversity in phenotype is a testament to the Amazigh's extensive genetic mixing over millennia. Amazigh themselves enclose genetically diverse groups and have a high degree of genetic heterogeneity. It is therefore difficult to assign a single subset of features to Amazigh. Let's examine their genetics. Genetic studies have shown that the Berber people possess a unique genetic makeup, distinct from their Arab neighbors. Genetic data from present-day populations suggests that North African ancestry has contributions from four main sources. One, an autochthonous Maghrebi component related to a back migration to Africa 12,000 years ago from Western Eurasia. These are essentially Neolithic Anatolian farmers. 2. A Middle Eastern component probably associated with the Arab conquest. 3. A Sub-Saharan component derived from Trans-Saharan migrations. And 4. A European component that has been linked to recent historic movements. Let's talk more about their primary DNA component, the autochthonous North African DNA. In 1984, Chabani H. et al. conducted an extensive study of the Berber people, they analyzed blood samples from 120 Tunisian Amazigh of Galala village and compared the results with those of other Berber groups. The combined data, considered in the light of sociological, historical and paleontological data, support the hypothesis that the Amazigh stem from a back migration of Neolithic Anatolian farmers and hunter-gatherers. The Amazigh carry an EM183 haplogroup that's distinct to them only. The Tuareg Amazigh are of the same stock as the Eurasian North African Amazigh. The difference lies in their migration southwards and their increased interactions, trade, marriage and slave trade with black Africans who had been living in the Sahara and the Sahel for thousands of years, resulting in a higher concentration of West African components in their DNA. Here are 10 surprising facts about the Amazi that you probably didn't know. 1. Research reveals strong genetic affinities between the Cushitic people of the Horn of Africa and the Amazigh. An average Somali, for instance, has about 10 to 20 percent North African DNA. There is even a city in Somali called Berbera, which begs the question, could the Amazigh be partially descended from the Somali? Food for thought. 2. Did you know that the term Berber was first used centuries ago by foreigners and is a variation of the Greek word barbaros, barbarian? Interestingly, foreigners used the term to describe anyone who didn't speak Greek. It was never intended to offend, unlike the modern-day term that is used to describe an uncivilized group of people. Nowadays, Berbers proudly call themselves Amazigh, Tamazigt or Imazigan, plural, meaning free men or noble people. 3. The Tamazite language's root has an impressive 38 consonants and only 3 vowels. Did you know that Berber languages share similarities with Germanic languages? 
This is largely due to the fact that the Vandals, a Germanic tribe, ruled North Africa for the better part of 100 years. 4. In the years following the spread of Christianity across North Africa, many Berbers lived as Christians and Jews. The Islamic conquest of the 7th century brought with it forced allegiance to Islamic rule, against which the Berbers fought strongly, but to which they finally submitted. 5. Did you know that out of all the major cities in North Africa, Marrakech has the largest Amazigh population and is considered more Amazigh than Arab? The Moroccan population is approximately 40% Amazigh. 6. The Egyptian pharaoh Shoshenk I, founder of the 22nd Egyptian dynasty, was an Amazigh who managed to invade ancient Palestine. 7. They've kept their cuisines for centuries because they're so good. Some traditional recipes even spread across North Africa because of their deliciousness. Some of the main dishes that they have been hanging onto for a very long time include couscous, pastillas, tagines, bourjeje, and tahricht. 8. Traditional Amazighi women commonly tattooed their faces. It's interesting to note that Islamic law prohibits both facial tattoos and tattoos in general, but somehow, in the adoption of Islam by the Amazighi and the development of Amazigh identity, this practice has survived to this day. The symbols often serve as markers for significant events in a woman's life, represent values she aspires to uphold, or serve as protective talismans. However, this is a dying tradition. 9. While Arabs may be a patriarchal society, Amazighi people are traditionally matriarchal. On the surface, it may appear that the husband or men in general hold the official positions and places of power. But behind closed doors, women have the final say. In some Tuareg groups, like in Mauritania, a woman is free to divorce a man and take away everything. There is even a market where divorced women meet to sell the items they carried from their ex-husbands and use the money to alleviate the pain in their hearts while seeking new love. These divorced women are considered more attractive than never married women. In Algeria, Kahina, a warrior queen, is recognized for leading a successful resistance against Arab invaders. 10. Some well-known Amazig people include Zinedine Zidane, a French footballer whose parents are Kabyles from Algeria. Ibn Battuta, a renowned traveler and scholar, was of Berber descent and is known for his extensive journeys throughout Africa, Asia and Europe during the 14th century. And lastly, Tariq ibn Ziyad, who was a Berber commander, served the Umayyad Empire and conquered the Iberian Peninsula in 711 AD. He is responsible for spreading Islam and Islamic culture across the region. Thank you for watching. Give this video a big like and as usual, I will see you in the next video.